Hey everyone, welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. This is Ferocious Llama, and I'm back with uh, today. I'm trying out a new deck. I, I, I first kind of got into competitive magic during Onslaught Block, and then shortly after was Mirrodin Block. Uh, well, immediately after. And uh, one of my favorite decks to play was always, you know, Skull Clamp Ravager. Um, and I thought, guy, that would be so cool to play it in Vintage, where you could play it like in its purest form. So anyway, I'm going to play uh, uh, some games with that. Uh, but basically, uh, the original deck was, you know, black, blue, and red for Shrapnel Blast. And I think it was called, um, not Galvanic Blast, the one from Mirrod. Electrostatic Bolt is what it was called. And uh, eh, that's really not that um, not that relevant today in, in Vintage. Uh, it was great and mirrored and standard, though. But anyway, so here's what we got. We got, uh, you know, uh, it, back in the old days, what we had was we just had Glimmer Voids and Artifact Lands uh, and uh, Blink Moth Nexuses. But uh, I didn't put in any Blink Moth Nexuses just because um, really a 1 1 flyer and vintage is not so great, and everything is pretty much like instant speed kill. There are really very few sorcery kill uh, kill cards, so having an Ink Moth Nexus really isn't advantageous over having, you know, a 1-1 one -one flyer. So, anyway, we got Vault of Whispers, Seed of the Syn uh, Synod, uh, one Tolarian Academy to take advantage of all the, uh, you know, artifacts in the uh, in the deck. Uh, two Mishra's, Mishra's Workshops, because there are a good deal of, uh, I'll get to them in a second, a good deal of colored spells. Um, but hey, reusable black lotus for colorless sounds good to me, right? Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work on equipping skull clamp. It only works on casting spells, but that's okay because there's still a, a pretty good number of them. Um, and when this is best, of course, is on turn one. Glimmer void because, well, it's you know, city of brass minus the pain. Uh, as long as you have an artifact in play, which we almost always have. Uh, then we got mox sapphire, uh, mox jet. Uh, Mana Crypt and Black Lotus. The reason there are only two moxes is because we're only playing blue and black cards. Uh, I tried the deck originally with like a fast bond because once you get going with Skull Clamp, I thought it'd be cool to be able to, you know, play a fast bond, then play all the lands I drew, and then just keep equipping the Skull Clamp and having my stuff keep getting bigger and killing my opponent that way. Um, didn't work so well in practice. So this is really just kind of a fun deck. I don't expect it to win that much, but uh, I was playing it a little bit last night and it was a lot of fun and it won a couple of times, but uh, you know, it's not something I would seriously take to a tournament or anything. Uh, and then we got uh, Soul Ring for more more uh, super fast mana. We got four of the good old Skull Clamp. Uh, this is like basically, this is the deck, you know, with Skull Clamp. Um, uh, mana Vault. A little bit more fast mana. So altogether, I think we have about uh, 21 sources of mana. So I figure that's pretty good. And uh, 12 of them are, well, 13 of them, including uh, Tolarian Academy, are blue or black. So, uh, well, actually 13, 14, 15, 15 of them. That's not bad, I don't think. Um, so I don't know. I mean, of course, this is just from We got four mental missteps because it's kind of unfortunate, but mental misstep is kind of becoming one of those cards where... Um, it's a four of in vintage now, and it's it really just it's because it always stinks, you know, when your turn one play always always seems to get uh, you know mental misstep that takes a lot of fun out of the game. My school clamps get misstepped. I've never had an arcbound worker get misstepped, but I have had you know my vamps, my disciple of the vaults, and school clamps all get uh, and ancestral recall all get. Uh, mental misstep. So, anyway, that's pretty much a four of these days. Now, in the original deck, back if you go look at, like, a standard deck list from back in the day, uh, it had four thought casts and four skull clamps, and that was really all the card drawing you need. So I thought, I have the four skull clamps, because that's obviously super powerful card drawing. And then, instead of four thought casts, I thought, well, we could do better than that. We could do Ancestral Recall, which is always, always, 100% of the time better than thought cast. Uh, then we got Brainstorm, which, there's no shuffle effects, but it could be one of those things where I draw the land that I need when I need it kind of a thing. Um, you know, so uh, I, hopefully I'll be drawing so many cards that, you know, it won't matter. Uh, there's a Ponder because it's restricted. I figure all the restricted cards are all better than Thoughtcast because Thoughtcast isn't restricted, right? And then one Preordain because uh, that's the best I could do um, <laughs> other than, you know, those three. Um for, you know, cheap, cheap cards to, uh, that draw cards. And then we got four Disciple of the Vaults because, you know, that was, like, one of the key elements of, like, the old-school affinity was kill your opponent with Disciple of the Vault. Like, like, 
make it hard to remove your stuff because you'll lose the game if you do. And that's that's really what I wanted with this. That's what I wanted to do. So, um, so I threw those in here. I figure, hey, Vampiric Tutor can't be bad. Um, if it's restricted, it must be good, right? So I threw in a Vamp and a Demonic. Um, threw in four Arcbound Workers because Arcbound Workers are... Uh, uh, I, I remember when I first saw the Affinity deck, I was playing at a tournament at a place, I live in Southern California, it's a place in Rancho Cucamonga, which is a good solid 45 minutes away from where I live now, and uh, I didn't live over there, but I had a girlfriend who lived over there, and um, every every Saturday at noon they had a standard tournament, because to, we'd go to the Friday Night Magic over here by my house, then we'd uh, stay over at her house, and then um, go to the 12 o'clock standard over there, um, I wish I could remember the name of the store, but I cannot. Um, anyway, the first time I saw the deck, he had Arkham Worker, Arkham Stinger, Arkham Ravager, and Skull Clamp, and Thoughtcast. And I was like, and it was like, it was, it was, you know, several weeks before the, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Dark Steel had only been around, you know, for a few weeks before, uh, Pro Tour Dark Steel or whatever it was called back then. Uh, I think it was, I think, it, I don't remember where it was. Um, I think it was Pro Tour Kobe, actually. Anyway. Um, but it was, it was the Pro Tour 4 Dark Steel, and, uh, I just remember, we all saw it, and we were like, that's, that's not a beatable deck. <laughs> the first time we ever saw it, we were like, that's, that's amazing, like, how that works, because you, you sacrifice stuff, and make your Ravager bigger, and they lose life to the Disciple, and then the Arcbound Ravager gets bigger, and then you put it all on the Arcbound Stinger, and then it flies over for lethal, like, it was the most amazing thing we'd ever seen. Um, you know, because it just it just had so much synergy. That's that's really kind of one of the fun things about it. Um, got a time walk because hey, when uh you know, when I got like a five five ravager or something, I want to um time walk and attack again with it, right? And then force of will because well, hey, why not, right? That's actually kind of the reason I threw in uh, the next card, somber hoverguard, was because I thought, well, guy. It's a one mana three two flyer, which isn't bad. Hey, people play Delver. This is clearly better than Delver if I have five artifacts. But uh, you know, I thought, hey, if I have five artifacts, it's as good as Del it's better than Delver because um, it comes into play as the three two, and uh, it, it conveniently can be skull clamped. Then I can attack for four, and then if it dies, I get to draw my two. That's what I always liked about it, and it pitches to force of will. So um, overall, I I, I think. Uh, I don't know, I was playing with it. It's fun deck to play. It's, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, it's not a tier one <laughs> vintage deck by any means, but it's fun to play. So uh, let's play some matches and uh, see how it goes. All right, we won the die roll, so we are playing first. And all right, let's see, we got three land, which is kind of a lot. No accelerants, no mocks, and no nothing cool like that. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll go turn. We're going to keep, obviously, because uh, it's a good hand. Um, we don't need three lands. It's kind of a lot, but whatever. Um, what I think we're going to do is we're going to go see to the Synod, or Synod, or however you want to say it, and we're going to preordain because uh, we don't want them to know we're playing Affinity. Okay, so we got Brainstorm and Somber Hoverguard. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, brainstorm on top, and then so somber hoverguard, uh, uh, rather somber hoverguard on top of that. So, um, and then we draw somber hoverguard. So what we'll do next turn is we'll go vault of whispers, and we'll play uh, probably our arcbound worker and a probably arcbound worker, and then uh, oh, that's very bad. That is very, very, very bad. Oh, uh, we cannot beat that, I don't think. So, let's see here. Um, wow, yeah. Yeah, that's real bad. Okay. Well, we're going to lose. We're going to lose because he's playing Back to Basics main deck in Vintage, which is not common. see here well uh, I guess what we'll do is we will uh, ancestral recall, recall ourselves and hopefully it doesn't get countered um, 
which it looks like it's gonna get. And see, mental misstep, it's everywhere. Okay, well, let's go ahead and throw it on an Arcbound Worker. All right. see we'll have one two three four not quite enough to play somber hover guard well let's just play our seat of the synod and uh we'll probably brainstorm at the end of our opponent's turn um but i have a suspicion he's going to counter it so um that may not be the brightest uh, uh line to take Oh, okay. Now we draw a mental misstep. Um, it's not very useful. Okay, well, let's attack. Alright, and our opponent lost the flip. Looks like Mana Crypt might win for this one. Um... You know, I think this is that stupid uh, Oroch Salvagers deck. He's going to go fetch up a uh, Black Lotus, and he's got one, two, three, four. Um, let's see, i got to put two things back, eh? Oh, I guess I'll put back a Workshop, because that's not very good. And a Disciple of the Vault. And then... Uh, he's going to get Black Lotus here, and then he's probably going to play his Orox Salvagers, make Infinity Mana, and um, then we lose. Because uh, I think I played this guy. Um, okay, Sensei's Divine Cup. Well, that's not that scary at all. Um, yeah, sure. You can mana drain that. Yeah, now you get one mana in your second main phase. Okay. Use it to top. Fair enough. Not that he couldn't have done that with his Library of Alexander. But he's only got two cards in hand, so I'm not... Um, you know terribly um, worried all right let's see so we've got one two three four so if we go five I wonder how that would work okay so we're definitely playing our black lotus right Let's see. Now, if we have, let's see, if we play our Archmon Ravager and our Black, uh, our um, uh, Disciple of the Vault, rather, we can go, we can attack for one, let's see, two, whoops, three, four, five, six, make him lose f one, two, three, four life, make him block with his Trinket Mage, um, I don't think we can kill him this turn. So, we're going to go with, let's see, I wonder if, okay, so I only got to pay blue to play him. 
Because Black Lotus is in play. Okay. So. I guess we're going to play that guy. And then we're going to play the other one too. But he's going to cost us two because he's, we only got less artifacts, you know? One less artifact now. Because we can Black Lotus uh, mana ability. So, we, okay. Wow, he hits time walk for that. He is in a dire, dire situation, apparently, right? Okay, um, let's play another one. Guy, apparently a 3 2 flyer is good in vintage. So, I don't know, I guess. I mean, Delver gets played, and Delver's. I mean, I don't know, Delver might be as good as Somber Hover Guard or better, but. In this deck, it's pretty good. It's probably better than, I mean, Delver. So, I don't know. Guy, I didn't think we were going to win to that. What was it? Turn two back to basics? <laughs> so, oh, okay. And a Mishra's Workshop. That's not very useful. Um, all right. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go Workshop, play Ravager. <laughs> he drew a spell snare. Oh, wow. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. Now, I, this is a trend, actually, that I've been seeing a lot in, in Vintage lately, is a lot of counter... Like, there are decks that run, you know, 18 counter spells, 20 counter spells. And, like, for me, it's kind of like, I, I don't understand. Um, but whatever. And I don't know. I think I think like it's it's a throwback to like the old. Um, I don't know. I think it was called. We always called it the deck. I don't know what it was really called, but basically it was like an old deck back in the old days that you know only one guy at the shop I played at when I was a kid played it. And it was like during Ice Age. He had uh, okay, so he concedes and he had a a uh, spell snare. Oh, those were his top three was spell snare. They said they fixed this bug. <laughs> in the most recent update, they did not, uh, where it would show people my stuff, uh, or show them our stuff, or show us their stuff, if, you know, it was in, like, a temporary zone, like they were looking at it or scrying or whatever. Um, they said they fixed it for scry, but they obviously did not fix it for Synthetic Divine Top. And we don't have a sideboard for this deck, because I just made it and thought I'd play it. would be fun. But anyway, there was, like, the deck that had, like, four swords, plowshares, four counter spells, four mana drains, one Wrath of God, a Demonic Tutor, Jame Day Tomes, um, Ivory Tower to Gain Life, and uh, that was, like, it, you know? Uh, and then, like, a lot of land. Oh, and a, a Brain Geyser to kill you, or to draw cards, whichever. And a, oh, a power, one Power Sink, so that he could uh, wait till I played something, and then Power Sink it for a whole bunch with the Mana Drain his Power Sink. Um, oh, wow. Um... Can we keep this? Um, yeah, we can keep this. We're on the draw, so hopefully he doesn't do anything really bad. Okay. Oh, cool. And land. Guys, this is going really good. But anyway, that was like the deck. And anyway, all these counter spells. Like, because that was the thing is, back at that old school deck, all it would do is it would counter all your spells... And then, or, or if you played creatures, they'd get source plowshares. And that was it. That was the deck. You know, oh, and it had two Sarah Angels, because that was, like, their premier creature back then. And a moat. So, you know, only flying stuff could attack. But, anyway, the point was, it countered all of your stuff. And, uh, it's like, I, I don't know, like, I, I, that's like a throwback, kind of, for me, at least what I feel like is, that's like a throwback to, um, that deck which kind of always cracks me up a little. So let's see. Okay. Um, now I'm thinking, should we go Somber Hover Guards, Arc Run Stinger? Um, how about if we go... Let's see. Uh, our Somber Hover Guard would cost four, so it's definitely not as good as a...
over right now. But it's okay. We're going to go Arcbound Worker. And Arcbound Stinger. Is he going to spell snare that? Oh, okay. And then at the end, uh, whenever we have an opportunity, we will uh, either at the end of his turn or when he cracks that fetch land, we're going to vamp. Sure, okay. Well, end of his turn, we'll vamp. And he's going to counter it. And then he's probably going to strip mine our land. Oh, sweet. We're going to get a mock sapphire. Um... Because his stupid back to basics doesn't hurt it, which I like. Okay, so he's cracking a land and getting a island for a repeal. Sure. Okay, fair enough. Repeal my Arcbound Worker. So, I don't know, but uh, a lot of counter spells. And, uh, I mean, he's obviously playing a combo deck because he's playing Repeal. Nobody plays Repeal unless you're playing combo. And it's to bounce. Generally, he uses it to bounce his own mocks. Let's see. Okay, we lose. Uh, yeah, sure. We lose. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there a way we could not lose? Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. Energy flux, right. Oh, well, we'll sack him for a three. Hope we can. Hope that's enough, right? But hey, if you can return it to our hand, we lose. So. Which you might be able to, so. But I don't know, it's like he's playing, uh, it's like old school controls, what his, his deck feels like, so. I don't know. But hey, look at the plus side. It's better than Delverin that he cannot repeal it, because it would cost seven. <laughs> uh, sure, cycle rebuild. Yeah. Um, oh, this is funny. <laughs> that is very funny. I draw a Tolarian Academy. All right, well, we'll just keep attacking for three. See what happens. Yeah, sure. Drink a mage. I don't suppose there's any luck. He's going to get something like a, you know, mana crypt that'll do potentially three damage every turn, so. Okay, well, attack over for some more. So, I wonder what he's got that he needs Black Lotus for. He's probably got a, uh, well, if he has a Jace, he's gonna, he wins automatic, so. But he's obviously playing combo because he went and he got his Black Lotus, so. Right. And plays Jace, and we lose. Sure. That's how it goes. Okay, well. I don't know why we don't try any. F we do no skull clamps and no force of wills. Ah, that's lousy. I don't know. I think against. Uh, I like a real deck, like a real vintage deck. Um, I really don't think that, uh, like the control strategies really have like a lot of um, ground to stand on. Personally, I just, I, I just think like doing what you do is better than. Um, you know, like all, all the tools available to control that aren't available in other formats, 
those are all the same tools that um, you know the combo and the aggro and the whatever else decks have so um, you know just my thoughts sure yeah force will my skull clamp okay don't let me draw a billion cards with my with ridiculous cards that are awesome like skull clamp well hopefully draw another one I don't know I have bad, we have we're, we're having real bad uh, um, skull clamp slash force of will luck this game All right, we're gonna vamp. Does he have another force? What do you exile? Oh, he exiled Trinket Mage. Okay, we're gonna get a Skull Clamp. And then we're gonna brainstorm. And then we're going to put back our Arcbound Stinger and our Arcbound Worker. Then we're going to play our Skull Clamp. If he has a counter, why wouldn't he have countered the Vamp or the Brainstorm? That's what I want to know. Uh, maybe he doesn't have a counter and he's... I don't know, maybe he doesn't have a counter and he's just, you know trying to bluff or he's got a counter and he's saving it for something really good but like what would it be like I don't have a clue so is he gonna go energy flux now yeah sure energy flux nice um let's see what are we saving um I suppose we're saving. Yeah, we really can't be energy flux because I didn't sideboard for that. I didn't have a. I didn't make a sideboard. Um, and guy, he just happens to run energy flux. That's ridiculous. Um, I think we'll save that guy. So, well, our arc bomb worker. We're gonna always yes this one. Um, and then we will attack for two. to get Jace and then we can't win yeah can't win all right well that's how it goes uh, well we won one game but uh, uh, you know he had uh, he happened to have energy flux which is really the one card that just kills us um, we can even beat Takaki uh, Kataki or whatever from uh, champions block but we cannot beat um, we can't be energy flux. And so he happened to have energy flux. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys.